Hey everybody, make some noise for your host of the show, socially awkward and uncomfortable. But seriously, here he is, St. Patrick. Friends, fans, little monsters, subscribers, supporters, and people that are just watching but not supporting. Yes, I'm talking about you out there. Are you comfortable? Is your brain relaxed? Do you now have to go poop after getting out of the shower? Are you ready to finally stop supporting the Kardashians? I'm going to struggle saying their name. <laughs> um, and these fake influencers and start supporting your friend's local business. Well, my friends, sit back and relax and know that this show at times might make you feel awkward and uncomfortable. Not uncomfortable like trying the Carolina Reaper uh, challenge and realizing that this won't end well in a few seconds. Nor when it has to come out the other end. Not awkward like taking a poop uh, in the stalls and some lunatic is shaking on the door trying to break in this show may cause discomfort that may at times cause uh that may at times talk about uncomfortable situations the conditions to which you just might not know what to say this is the podcast that will be everything socially awkward and uncomfortable i am your host mr st patrick and we got elijah wealth for generations lee in the house yo yo how you doing i'm doing splendid sir good good we have a controversial show today. Today, we'll be discussing interracial dating. Uh, with that being said, please help me welcome my guests for today, Jessica Delicious Dishes and Bo to the show. Hello. How are you both doing? I want a nickname. Yeah. <laughs> I'm called Bo Delicious. <laughs> doing good. Your whole Actually, intro. that sounds good, Bo Delicious. Bo Delicious. <laughs> Actually, Beautiful. That's Actually, a stage name right there. Yeah. He should be called, I always call him beautiful because oh, yeah. his name is halfway, you can't spell beautiful without spelling Bo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I will say that. I'll give you a round of applause. Thank you, Bo Delicious. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> and there was a reason I left both of you guys' last names out. Um, it was really because I couldn't like couldn't figure out. It. I couldn't pronounce <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. braces, the way that my tongue is shaped in my mouth, I could not figure out how to say it. It's okay. I, I have an underbite. Yeah. It's like, I, man, my lisp is just horrible too. I want to talk. Yeah. But how do you say your last name? Kendasso. Kendasso. And how do you say your last name? Marrero. Well, Which I don't say it right either because I can't roll my R's. Marrero. Yeah. Marrero. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's my last name. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even say my last name um, right half the time. My, even my first name. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why I go by Patrick. And on this show, St. Patrick. Mm -hmm. so, Patrick. Okay. Yes. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how are you both feeling today? Good. Yeah. Good. Oh, I guess a ten. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe like an eight. I need a massage. But yeah. um, I know a good guy, uh, wealth for generations, Lee. That you know. Yeah. 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 Working I, I tried to, to hire him every once in a while, but he's always too busy. Yeah. You're never too busy for a massage. <laughs> never yeah. too busy. Uh, feeling a a light nine. That's pretty good. Yeah, light nine. Yeah. I just had to talk about before I got here. It was like yeah. two o'clock, I started sniffing down like a self talk before I got here. So. Yeah. I <laughs> Give it an hour and you're gonna Give be at like a five. Yeah, I'm sound like your whole intro. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be in the restroom. We're gonna be like, like my junior here anymore. at high school. Yeah. <laughs> Before we go into the main focal point, um, let's have some fun with this crazy questions. Um, do any of you find your um, your cousins attractive? No. At any <laughs> like, you look at like one of your cousins, you're like, oh, man, you know, maybe. No, I mean, because like. Uh, <laughs> That's that's sad that I have to hesitate for a second, but no, no, yeah, no. <laughs> Thinking about all your cousins, like at any point, is that? No, I shouldn't I roll my eyes back. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> there is a reason why I'm asking that, by the way. Um, Doctor Oz came out saying it's okay to to be kissing cousins, at second cousins. That is, you don't have to worry about Down syndrome, um, and it's more about genetic strain. What do you guys think? Um. I mean, it's not for me, uh -huh. but yeah, I can't judge. Like love is love, <laughs> I guess you know. Yes. We're in the wrong state. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, there's more terrible things going on in the world than kissing cousins. Yeah. Let's yeah. put it yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, and it's a good thing he's only talking about kissing. Because, yeah, well, what yeah. usually comes after that? Yeah. Hugging, hugging. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then I kick him in the shins <laughs> and run away. Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> That's all I can say. No. No. Right. no. And then if you had to erase one race, what which one would you choose? Mexican. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh honestly? Yeah. White people. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, I, your guys I are... honestly thought you were talking about like a foot race at first. So. <laughs> honestly, that's that's a good one because Elijah said foot race, and I actually would choose the racers. Um, I mean, mm, okay, yeah. I, got, I got where you're going. Well, with you now. said a race of people. No, I said race. Oh, I said what race would you, you a race? People. Yeah, you guys are. I said just committed. <laughs> I mean, people are going to watch this all over the world. And uh, they're going to be like, huh? Mm. Highly suspect now. You said favorite race, though. A race. A race? Your favorite race. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would do a racers. And the reason why mm. um, is so that way we, we wouldn't be able to um, see everybody's mistakes. That way they know that it's perfectly okay to have imperfections in life. So I would erase, or I wouldn't erase racers. I don't know. With that being said, we are going to take a quick commercial break before we get into like the, the real topic because we're going to discuss to them about HR and stuff like that. So we'll be right back. Abari Entertainment Films present There's Only One Name for News with Damon and Aisha. Abari Live Podcast. Habari Entertainment, a race against time. On a quest for glory. Habari News Weekly, HabariEntertainment.com. Catch us for more. Visit us. AbariEntertainment.com. And we are back. Um, before we get into the topics, I do want to point out that it's important that we, as viewers and people out there, you know, just as we come across this, make sure you look into your moles. Um, we don't see the importance of it, and it really is a big thing to, to look into. Um, a lot of times we just think that they're just moles, but a lot of times they can be cancerous. So uh, if you get a chance, look into your moles. They what? are really, I mean, it's a real point. What, I was what is about. moles? Like moles, like your oh like, moles, moles. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I love yeah. mine. I'll never take it off. But you know, how some of them are like <laughs> they can be looked upon as like being dangerous, yeah, precancerous, yeah, yeah benign, yeah, yeah. yeah. benign. Yeah. So make sure you check into your moles. Um, today I wanted to discuss interracial dating. I think it's an important topic that doesn't get much recognition or spotlight. Uh, what do you think of when you think of interracial dating? Well, to go back to your first intro topic about races, it threw me <laughs> off, and I shook my fist when I said it. <laughs> uh, uh, interracial dating, I felt like the time and how it is, maybe like this topic would have been like very skeptical, maybe like five, six years ago. But like yeah. now, even when I told my like coworkers I'm going to do this podcast with my brother-in-law, they're all of them I asked for basically interracial relationships. And like basically it's like not really frowned upon anymore. It's just like, oh, okay, cool. And you're dating that person. Oh, you're dating that person, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, unless you're like kind of. older. Yeah, oh, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> unless you're older. Yeah. But unless like, you're older. Yeah, but like with my generation or even younger than that, it's just not really um, – you you don't really roll your eyes with it or anything, you know? Uh, you don't have any like – I don't know. Sometimes. Because you still Sometimes. get – you still come across those, you know, bigotry sure. people. Yeah. 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 So – um. I'm 44, uh -huh. and I never really was attracted to white men. Yeah. So um, I've heard it all, and a lot of it comes from white people yeah. not realizing that I'm in a relationship with somebody that's not white, you know, and yeah. they make comments. And it's really insulting because <clears throat> you're just making an assumption of the type of – like that you – you think I'm like you and yeah. I don't want to be anything like you. Right. <laughs> so um, not thinking the same way as a lot of people uh -huh. that I look like, that's a little bit of a struggle for me. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were like, what race would you erase? And I was <laughs> like, I mean, it sounds bad, but like when yeah. I think back on like history and all the bullshit that white people have done to right. the rest of the world, even to their own it's people. like, it, and then I see, you know, how they really think because they are open with yeah. me because I'm white. It's really terrible. Like it's, sucks and not saying only white people are racist because yeah. a lot of people can be racist but yeah it's just how you're brought up yeah but i think it makes it well, harder to your point because if you are white it's more harder or i think it's if it's any other race they kind of make excuses for it 
But you are right. It happens within every race. It happens with everything, with every race. Um, My ex-husband, he's Puerto Rican and his family was not necessarily racist, but they didn't believe that you should intermarry with each other. And I remember telling my mother-in-law, I'm like, well, what do you think of me then? Yeah. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, Mm -hmm. I'm in an interracial relationship with your son. (laughs) (laughs) Crazy. But because I was white, she didn't think anything of it. And I was just like, that's weird to me. Like, how do you say like, Oh, you shouldn't be in an interracial interracial relationship. But then I was accepted. Yeah. If my skin was darker, that would have been a problem. That's true. I know in different countries, like the lighter your skin, the more attractive you are. That's why I think like in Jamaica, they bleach your skin. Yeah. Oh, wow. Which is sad to me. Like, I love that. I love dark skin. Yeah. Uh, tidbit. They used to call me Puerto Rican poppy. And then mm. so they found out that I was not Puerto Rican. Um, but that's poppy neither too. here nor there. Yeah. But I do have to point out uh, a point that you made earlier. And I, I'm very hopeful for our future uh, because yeah. everybody it's now we're a giant melting part. Everybody's, yeah. you know, I love it. so, it's, yeah. so it's America, right? Well, yeah. That's where we live in basically. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not just here. I mean, you go to mm. other countries and a lot of people are mixed. Yeah. You know, but we made it such a big deal here. So yeah. speaking of that, I was talking to my coworker one time too. And then she said that only in America, you base your race off of something like, oh, I'm African-American, but you're uh-huh. actually truly American, right? Yeah, and right. if you go mm-hmm. to somewhere like in like Europe, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm Danish, but your skin color is different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so weird how we do it here yeah. in a lot of different mm-hmm. ways. Well, it's all about separation, right? right? Keeping... We're separated by sex, by class, by race, by religion. Everything it's all now. about separation. Yeah. And it needs to be the opposite, right? Yeah. I, I hate mean, labels. When you're a human <laughs> talking to another human, that's what it should be. You're yeah. two human beings having a conversation. It doesn't matter if you pray to a God, if you don't, who you lay your head next to. I mean, how you like to dress, what music you listen to. None of that right. should matter. Yeah. You know, if you have common ground and you can have a good conversation with somebody that that should be the thing right (laughs) yeah i hate labels um actually a game that we play at home is i have my wife take all the the labels off the cans and then we're like what are we gonna eat today is it beans (laughs) is it vegetables we don't know just because we do not do do that corn (laughs) we don't know um what stereotypes do you get connected to Uh, you were mentioning it kind of earlier so you said stereotypes? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is stereotypes. I was like, oh, yeah, kind of like a Captain <laughs> <laughs> Stereo? Uh, say the question one more time. What stereotypes do you get connected to? Uh, mine's easy. What's yours? Um, yeah. I don't know. People always think I'm like a goody goody. They don't yeah. feel, like they don't see that I have this little crazy wild side. So, so unfortunately, <laughs> because of your race, you're getting connected to the positive. Yeah, like people always, oh, I thought you were like a teacher or something. And I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I went to high school out here. Um, yeah. So basically, like, just like in the Mexican uh, Mexican culture, I, I either call you like Chino, or like yeah. Chinese. That's the base, the basic Asian that you go through and everything. But I'm actually from Guam. Yeah. I'm a Pacific Islander. My race is a Chamorro. Yeah. So I'm, I'm an indigenous to that, that island. But as soon as I came here to like in Arizona, they're not really... I guess like culture appropriated so they're knowledgeable there you go they don't they're not knowledgeable of the different races in the world uh-huh. whereas if like in arizona there's only you know like three four races at max that they know by heart and know yeah. how to like identify between the, 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 the multiple races and stuff but right um yeah those are the stereotypes i kind of get into um based off how i look i guess ever since like i got my tattoos and everything they're able to distinguish me but like when i was younger it was a little harder yeah. Just because of like, you know, my eyes, um, the way I talk. I used to have a little accent back in the day, but now it's more, you know, Americanized and everything. But yeah, yeah just growing up out here, it's uh, it's different. It's a lot different. You see more races. You see different people. I came out here open arms and everything, but it's just, uh, I guess the way like I grew up during that time, it was just, uh, it was kind of hard to transition from the culture back in like the island and coming right. over here. It's 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 different. Yeah. But I was back in like 20, with 2013, 2012. Yeah, it was hard in a sense just to kind of you know figure out how to I don't I wouldn't say fit in yeah but to be adapt. comfortable yeah, yeah. To be uh, adapt yeah. you know it's funny because I moved here from New York and that I yeah. even had to go through that and it was still America but like, yeah. it's, it's different in yeah. the West Coast yeah yeah it was yeah. hard to move here like 
I'm really toned down now compared to what yeah. I used to be yeah. coming from New York. And I grew up as a tomboy, talking shit, playing pool, <laughs> yeah. beer in a shot. You know, like, yeah. oh, I was so like more of a rough That makes sense with the Puerto girl. Rican. Okay, I got you. Yeah. So um, when I would go out after work and play pool and I'd be shit talking to the guys, they didn't know how to handle it. I'm right. like, now you're supposed to say something mean back. So yeah. Yeah. Like, this is part of playing like, pool. They just take offense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They would because I can hit them where it hurts. And that was like the fun part of talking shit shit like i want you to do it back i yeah. never learned like how women were in new york until the internet i guess like podcast and youtube and all that i didn't right. know how they like, i guess how they treated the men you know oh, in okay. regards of how do you would talk back to them too yeah. so everything that she's saying yeah. it's it's like we're, wow okay. we're fiery yeah they're fiery, they're they're fiery. Yeah. a yeah. bunch of leos yeah. it's a different yeah. beast yeah. <laughs> yeah it really is but um yeah when I moved here, I had to really tone down because people would take me so seriously and literally, and I'm really just joking around and talking yeah. crap. I had to tone up. I had to tone down. Yeah. 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 Um, How was your guys' upbringing? Crazy. Yeah. I mean, the, the reason why I ask is because of the fact that, like, you were attracted to the other race, the opposite race. Mm -hmm. um, or was it always that case for you? For me, in my instance, it's the same race. Yeah. So everything in there was a bunch of Chamorros or other Filipinos. So there's a lot of Filipinos that migrated over to Guam. Yeah. Um, and then Micronesians. Um, but sad to say that like the Micronesians were like looked down upon, you yeah. know? Not to say anything mean or anything, but that's like basically how you would see, you know, different cultures out here and yeah. you, you look down upon them over here. Um, so like my upbringing here, the only time I actually saw ever saw white people, Mexican people, black people was from kids from the Air Force or oh, kids wow. from the Navy. Because a lot of the people that went there that were from like the mainland yeah, um, were either uh, from military. So like me, um, like looking into like the race, it, it's I guess it kind of helped out since I moved out here like during like my high school phase. Yeah. Um, but coming here, I had to be open minded. Mm -hmm. I grew up in basically an all white neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there was definitely a lot of people that I was around that were racist. Yeah. Um, I was into hip hop music, which was not a thing that white people were into yeah. in the uh early nineties. <laughs> and here I am, this little white girl, like yeah, you know, listening to hip hop. Can we can we do the thing where like like Joe Rogan like looks up a YouTube video? Video later. Okay, on. gotcha. Yeah, so you just let me know and I'll add it in. I'll, I'll let you know after this podcast. I can't think on the top of my head. I think it's like babies, but it's just exactly the same thing that she's going through. Um, yeah. and then it's just his kids, it's cartoon, and like he walks out. Oh, bye, pop! I'm gonna go to school to get my education. Yeah. And as soon as he walks out the door, he changes to like a do rag, his blonde <laughs> hair, and the baggy pants. Yeah. I forgot what cartoon that was. It was back in like the mid 2000s. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's yeah, funny. Yeah, but yeah, it was. You know, I wasn't surrounded by a lot of people that didn't look like me. Yeah. Um, and then there was only a couple of, you know, people that had darker skin color and they got picked on and made fun of. And I hated that. That made me feel terrible. And my grandfather was racist. I mean. He, so wait, so what, how are you, how are you taught about race then? I really wasn't. My mom didn't talk about it. She yeah never really showed me a racist side or that I, you know, to look at people in a certain way. Um, my grandfather would make comments, but it wasn't like a heavy, like racist household where like things were being drilled into me or anything. But, oh, okay. you know, he would make little comments here and there. Yeah. Um, but my mom or, my, well, I didn't grow up with my dad, but my mom was not like that at all. Yeah. So, that probably helped, but maybe if it was, you know, more heavy, yeah, I don't know how that would affect me, but I still also think like you have to be accountable for your actions. You like do. regardless of how you're raised, eventually you grow up, right? right. And you should know better or 100%. know different. Like so f for when people use that as an excuse for their bad behavior, regardless of what it is, it's right. really just an excuse because we know right from wrong. We yeah. know what feels right and wrong. So, you know, yeah. at some point in your life, you, you can't just fall back on, oh, it's because of the way I was raised. I think that's a bullshit, you know, right. scapegoat. I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> Were you taught about race? Not the the races you guys are here like used to. Like, yeah. I'm, let's talk about like the Micronesian races. So there's multiple. There's uh, Chickies, Yap, Palawan. Uh, basically, they, they, I grew up around them and stuff, but okay. 
I guess in the sense of what she said was like your your upbringing and stuff. It's I see that the older generations they frown upon the other races. Oh, okay. you know, so like oh my gra- my my nana back in the day, she's like oh you shouldn't meet you know don't don't marry a Palawan girl you know because of their skin color. And then it's sad to say that those are the darker skin colors. Um, I forgot the word of what it was in Chamorro, but they yeah they basically just kind of like frowned upon it and then um just start growing up out here you're you're more open to it. Yeah. What messages do you guys choose to accept in regards to your to your races? Like, you know, for stuff that people say, like, you know, the stereotypes, the the um, you know, the special messages or whatever the case is. Do you guys ever gravitate um, to, the, to those? Gravitate? I mean, messages. I uh, I guess during like my first time out here, I was bullied um, yeah. just because of my race and Chinese race. And then like what I thought was funny was really funny back in Guam. Right. And I tried to bring it over here um, was not funny. I was bullied for that and then i guess called uh like gay at the time you know because yeah. like back then it was just a little rougher yeah yeah so those are the kind of the stereotypes and like i guess the messages that i see coming from moving from like different cultures and stuff right um it's it's different so i guess i i adapted so you you adapt to your environment but it's it's not like a quick thing you know what i thought yeah. it was but i was back i was younger back then but now i just I'm more um, reserved mm-hmm. in a sense, you know, I'm not as open like as you would be like in New York, right? Or, you know, you're, you're fiery. Right. I, I had to adapt to the point where I'm, I guess uh, I said already, but like to blend in. Yeah. I which... think, <clears throat> I think um, a big shift that happened for me was like realizing that certain jokes, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. That they really aren't appropriate. Yeah. You know, and like, I don't know really how to explain it, but like, yeah. you know, try, just trying to be more mindful of um, the way that that what you say, even if you don't really mean anything by it or like certain sayings right. like that people just tend to use and you don't really understand the, what's behind it and just being more sensitive to realizing with the time know, that's being changed you know. and stuff. And then, you know, how like it's more gender fluid in, yeah. in regards to like sexuality and stuff. I Maybe like 10 years ago. Yeah. My friends and I would throw the F word around like easily. Yeah. But now it's like, uh, it's more cringy. <laughs> you know, yeah. you got to yeah. watch the words you have to say now this this time of a uh, period of our life. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, about like the F, the F-A-G. F-A-G yeah. word. Yeah. F-A-G I have, word. I have a buddy <clears throat> actually who basically use it as the N word. Yeah. yeah no, I'm not, a, not allowed to 10 use it. 10 years ago, here. you know. Uh, yeah. And that's the thing too, right? Growing up in the 90s when everyone was, you know, yeah. thrown around the N word, like, huh? But not in the bad way. It was, yeah. you it was know, fun, because of the music. Manner. Yeah. yeah. Fun, and manner. it never felt right for me to hear who, who it. Is, I never liked that word. The first time I heard that word Thanks, was Eminem. Uh, yeah, Eminem. That was yeah. exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. It was Eminem. He used, the, oh, he used a lot of that word in his old, like, mm-hmm. 90s music. So, Jess, what can be learned with this negative undertone that you've had experience? Um, in as far as what goes. The, you know, the, the, I guess the wording. Uh, yeah so like a like a common one um oh i'm slaving away you know and it's like that's in really insensitive but because we hear it all the time uh-huh. we don't think to we don't think about it you right. know you it's just a, another term that we use yeah but it's not okay yeah you know <laughs> yeah. so i think really just being mindful of what you're saying and understanding what's the what, context, the, the context behind, behind it, and the history, it. yeah, right. Because those, you know, we shouldn't be desensitized to those things. Yeah. You know? Do any of you guys um, have family on either side that's throwing subliminal shade, like how you're kind of mentioning earlier, that are still doing it or intentionally let you know about their disapproval, whether it be your guys' own family or your partner's family? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of, but. I also don't live with any of my family. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my nana. Yeah. Yeah, my nana. Uh, she's more, you know, towards like dating your own race, like tomorrow and stuff. But Some more traditional. Yeah. Um, traditional. Hate, that's how you would say it. And yeah. I hate to say it because of the fact that it's like, a, I don't want people to think that I'm giving an excuse, but we were, they were grown up in a different time yeah. where they felt, seen, yeah. you know, seen fit. Oh, you're, you're going to meet her in February. Yeah. <laughs> so she's very uh, strict. Yeah, and then since yeah, it's uh, I don't know if I should be bringing this podcast, but it's uh, we have we're going a lot right now. We're going through a lot right now with my nana. Um, so she's gonna be invited to the wedding, but there's a bunch of like issues. So 
there was going to be table seatings. Yeah. If it wasn't for her specifically, we would have been open for the seatings. But it's she's a very strict woman. Yeah. Um, like not prideful. What is the word? Um, no, she's prideful. But there's like another word too, where because you had mentioned the seating, it has to be a certain way because of that that person that tradition. Uh, I wouldn't say tradition. It's just, just her. It's her. Um, yeah. So like we had to seat people, certain people around, um, yeah. just because of like my least in the building. <laughs> uh, I mean, you could be on the patio. We ordered two tables in the front that you could sit. There's a bar. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're in there. Yeah. Um, man. How does your um, partner feel around your family? My None of my family lives here, so. Oh. Wait, where do they live at? <laughs> Everyone's back east. Oh, wow. Have you gone back east? Yeah. I've met them, though. I've had to deal with them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think. And how do you feel, Elijah? Uh, they I. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've only I've only met her sister and her brother. Well, no, and your brother. Yeah. I mean, did they welcome you brother. with open arms? Yeah, they were all cool. Um, I honestly, with that stereotype of the New York kind it's of New York fire, you know, like, else, well, no, I was gonna say I felt like really they were really welcoming. You know what I mean? I feel I, like I don't think there would be an issue because of the fact that it's in back east. They're just they're more welcoming. They're welcome. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's another stereotype, right? Is that yeah. New Yorkers are assholes and this and that. But yeah, yeah, like that's what I was we might be to. loud, but yeah. and we might tell you like it is, and you might think that's offensive that we're being honest, but when you come from New York, being they don't want no being bullshit. fake is yeah. more disrespectful yeah. than being they do not honest, want that right? Right. So, you know, it, it can be a lot um if you're used to more of a quiet laid back lifestyle like we have, like yeah. There's not really a lot of like back and forth or yelling or fighting or, you know, like we're yeah. really chill in my house. But then you go to my sister's house. It's like, Dominic, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Get down here. And it's like, yeah. you're talking to your son like that. But maybe yeah. 10 years ago, that wouldn't have struck me as weird. But now I'm like, God damn, you're yeah. why are you talking to your kid like that? I would have cried in your household. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel in Elijah's family? Good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think same everyone, respect, yeah, everyone gets else. along. So, yeah. yeah. And what about you? Does your family like me? Yeah. I mean, I love you. I mean, you're a good <laughs> person. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not um, what you said yesterday. <laughs> I feel like this, but if, in the, in the end, as long as if they're not treating my, my family or just people that I know, if they're not treating them with good intentions or mm -hmm. there's no point, then I'm going to not necessarily, you know, make it a point, but I'll make it a point to let them know, like, I don't like this. Yeah. It's not good. It's not healthy. Yeah, like I'm not good at hold like pretending. Right. So if I'm not happy with somebody in life, just any time in life, like yeah. I might not be rude to you, but uh -huh. my face can't lie. Yeah. <laughs> so right. You and know how does um, how does your partner feel around your say your nana? Um, I'm not gonna be blindsided about it, but uh, she's 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 gone through some stuff with her. Um, yeah. Just like yeah, it's just over the time. My mom's side perfectly fine my dad's dad's side perfectly fine my dad's mom's side it's kind of like so the ones that are here the enemy yeah. yeah the ones that are here but like back home like in guam it's she she went we went we went back in uh, june so yeah. it's like more open um but like it's it's uh it's a moving process it's a move yeah progress, it's a process yeah. yeah and we've been together for like eight years already too so it's it's a long process. Yeah. Uh, but she's gotten more open in a sense than right. I would say like what, five years ago. What is the balance though? I mean, where do you where do you put yourself in to make the situations more comfortable? Um I I shouldn't say this, but it's I, I rely on my parents a lot. Okay. When it comes to that kind of sense, because she's just think of her as like a big businesswoman, right? Oh, yeah. very uh, critique, very like, you know, like suited. In every sense, in that, that kind of way. If you ever watch, like, what was that? Raise, uh, rich, crazy, crazy rich Asians or whatever. Right. That's exactly how my nana is. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a work. It's a work in progress. It's slowly, but hopefully that by February, she's going to be open because she may or may not go to the wedding. Is that going to bother you? Yeah. It's going to, it's going to hurt a little bit, but like, it's, but it's knowing, like for our happiness, you know? Yeah. But knowing the, the intentions behind it, does that change anything? Um, yeah, it does. Um, if it's whenever stuff doesn't go her way, yeah, she kind of throws it away and gives so up. So she's a bully. She's a bully in a sense. Like her sisters that live in Sierra Vista, like down yeah. south, because I think it was like a, a, a base down there. Right. Um, like she doesn't talk to them anymore. I think it's been going on since like 20, 2018, 2017. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's just her. It's like her her attitude mm. and everything. So it kind of comes down to like that's stuff that she needs to heal and yeah, take care that's, of in her, and within she's, herself. There's she's nothing. 70, any, yeah, she's yeah. in their ways. Not, yeah, <laughs> she's there's not no changing. Yeah. I mean, hopefully yeah. she could. You know, but everyone can change. That usually happens when they're you know Older, on their way out. On their way out. Yeah. <laughs> so did you guys have an initial conversation um, with your family or even your friends about interracial dating? No. No. It was I don't friends, need anyone's no. permission. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No. I didn't know if you needed to prepare them and say, hey, you know, this is who I'm dating now. So that way they're not coming in to like yeah. um, necessarily, you know, throwing no. the jabs. No, because honestly, I wouldn't even give it that type of energy. Like, that's you. this is who I'm choosing because that's right for me and we're uh -huh. happy together. And I don't really give a shit if anyone else likes it or not. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to come to my wedding, don't come. I'm not right. going to beg you or jump through hoops. If you don't want to support me and show right. me your love, then that's what's meant to be. Yeah. Because this is my life. You got to live your life and raise your family. Right. And now this is my life and my family. Right. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I understand that can be hard and not everybody can do that. A lot of people can't. But yeah. Um, my peace and my happiness means too much to me right. to sacrifice it because I was a people pleaser for way too long and always worried about making everybody else happy yeah. and, and not uh -huh. taking care of myself. Right. And I just refuse to do that anymore. Yeah. So. And Bo, thinking about your Nana, uh, what will be the message to your kids? Because you're actually having a, you know, kind of get a lesson from it. Mm. I will love you no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's no, um, because of the fact that you're able to experience it, you know how to love them. Yeah. Um, and how, with that being said, how do you show love in hate? How are you able to love your Nana, but still love your wife or your fiance? Uh, experience. Yeah. Experience. And you, how do you show love within hate? Um, honestly, it really depends key? on the situation. Like I said, um, so I haven't spoken with my mom for 20 years. Wow. And it sucks in yeah. a sense because I don't have like that backup, my family, you know, or yeah. that, that person that you should be able to go to. Right. Yeah. Um, but. It's I, it's what needed to be done for me and for right. my family and for my peace. So my thing is like if we – if it gets to the point where we're that, you know, butting heads that bad or you're infringing on my – on respecting me and my life and my choices, then you don't need to be there. Right. It has to be mutual. So – um. And that's rough because that's so unhealthy, and it just it just adds towards your it mental sucks. breakdown, your mental well, health. That's a long time. Well, yeah. Honestly, it was better yeah. for my mental health because she was the root cause of a lot of. Would you ever a lot of my problems? With her? I would if I knew that she would change, or I wouldn't have to worry about her. So, but like, then that goes back into like we were saying with you. You're there. You get set in their stones. Like you need something monumental to actually change. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and and here's the thing, because I had contemplated even like, oh, should I let my kids have a relationship with her? And then I would have to have all these rules in place in order for me to even trust her being around my kids. And I'm, I said to myself, like, this isn't. That wouldn't even be a relationship if yeah. I was like, well, you can't be with them alone and, you know, all these things because I don't trust her with them. Yeah. Um, and it was one thing for me to deal with her crazy when it was just me. But once I had my first son yeah, and how much I loved him and I was just like, holy shit, like how do you treat your child or somebody you're supposed to love in that manner, right? Wow. Yeah. So it's – and I don't hate her. I hate the things that she did. Um, and I guess maybe that's my best way yeah. that I can show love because I'm showing love for myself by not, by choosing not to um, engage in that type of a negative relationship. Yeah. I do have a question for both of you. Um, do you ever feel your partners treat you a certain way because of your race or vice versa? Do you guys ever treat them a certain way because of their race? Um, 
No, not necessarily. Like, like a lot of times we feed into like the um, stereotypes. Yeah. Um, do you guys ever do that? Vice versa. At- I, I was going to say, I don't think so. I mean, yeah. not, not that I'm aware of. Elijah, do I ever do that? <laughs> no, I don't think so. But I definitely um, try to limit the uh, gangster rap. The hard <laughs> rap I listen well, around you. Yeah. You, and <clears throat> but so that's probably it though honestly yeah. and and that's not even a race thing for me that's more of like i was into that music yeah but no no i'm talking about like the super hard stuff like <laughs> brother lynch type stuff and even, like, yeah again i have to <laughs> agree with you i don't think that's a, a thing I think, when i was younger i liked that stuff I, I, but now i'm just like i don't want to hear it because it's like poison to my ears like i don't want to hear the n-word being thrown around i don't want to hear like gangs and you know, yeah. mistreating women and and drugs being sensationalized. Like and I don't actually, think that's, too, that's good. That's a that's a part of the reason too why I try to. It's not just Jess. Like I try to keep mm-hmm. it away from the family because yeah. for me, when I do listen to that kind of music, it's more of a nostalgia thing. Like I'm not listening to it so I can hear everything they were saying. It's more of like I maybe I may have Pandora on and this song pops on and it reminds me of seventh grade, right. hanging out with so and so, walking down the canal. Da, 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 da. that's why I'm listening to it. Not because like, oh man, I haven't heard this West Side Connection song in forever. I'm going to hear them drop the N-word 17 times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he did a little experiment because he was, I think he was like stressed oh, out fasting. a lot at work. Yeah, I remember him telling And he that. did the music fast where he only listened to positive music and it yeah. did help boost his mood. And so knowing the, a lot of the things I know about um, like healing and, and uh, how color and music and tones and all those things can affect how you feel every day yeah i don't i don't want to listen to that stuff anymore you yeah know? No, i get it i do it from time to time um i'm just always trying to change on what i'm listening to what i'm mm-hmm. you know, putting into my you know to my mind and stuff like that yeah. honestly i really don't even like listening to music with words so much anymore i just like the tones or yeah. you know the nature you know things that are yeah. really soothing i make it more into like lo-fi hip-hop and stuff mm. just like chill mixing just i i sleep with like brown noise and just, oh, okay. I, I have to have like airpod on when i sleep sometimes a lot of times actually yeah and just uh just like you know like nature sometimes too. Just, i like, get the it sounds too, of the I, ocean i listen to those or like the edible sounds edible. um asmr <laughs> noises and stuff <laughs> Yeah, so like when you're asleep, you put food in your mouth, and it like triggers your brain to make you like chew. Oh, so it's so like when you can you... actually taste the sound. Okay. Like when you touch water, and you have to pee. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I thought you meant people were eating edibles and then making. Yeah, I was like, something. yeah, that's what I thought I too. Mean, I mean, you could do that's it that way too. too. Right. Yeah. Does race ever get brought up into an argument? No. Uh, no. 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 You guys are getting mad, and you're like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this about you, or you do know, we? hell no. I say it in like a jokingly manner just because like everyone I'm with is Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> like my friends are all Mexican. Yeah. Ali's Mexican. You know, it's everybody I work with is Mexican. So I feel as if I'm not singled out and they don't single me out either. Because yeah. like even They're took the time to like, like learn Spanish too. So it's like I know more Spanish than some of the people that, you know, are, are right. actually Mexican. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. I, Every- I yeah. yeah. I was going to say every once in a while, you know, Elijah will be like, that's some white people shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking like, that. Well, that's what I was yeah. wondering. You know, how are you guys reacting at home to where it's like. Well, not in like fights or anything, but, but like yeah. I might or not lock the, the front door. And he's like, why is it not? Why isn't it locked? I'm like, why do we need it locked? He's like, that's some white people shit. You yeah, should lock you, the door. And I'm like, lock okay. Door. Lock door. <laughs> yeah. Always lock the door. Always when the door. growing up in New York, the doors were never locked ever yeah, and go on too. yeah and so, what kind of people did you grow up with in new york a bunch of white people <laughs> yeah but i wasn't saying, but i didn't live in a, a the best area yeah. we, we live in so, surprise yeah but i bet you they weren't leaving the door unlocked in harlem mm. yes they do yeah i guess know your area that's what we're trying to say <laughs> so let's just go to um, fly to new york and check every no, door because yeah. here's the difference I'll ask Tamika, here's she's a, from harlem here's harlem, the difference Alaska. though yeah. is that there is a lot more community there because everyone lives on top of everybody. We're all watching each other's back. Like a weird car can't come creeping down the block without everyone being like, hey, did you see that car? Like everyone's watching what everyone's doing. Everyone's in everyone's business. So, yeah. you know, at night when you go to bed, yeah, sure, you're going to lock the door. But yeah, no. during the day, 
we're, neighbors are in and out of each other's houses. The kids are running around. Like, yeah. no, the yeah, doors I aren't mean, locked. They're that open. That is an honest statement, though, because I, I, I honestly say it in a jokingly manner, but it really is the, the environment that you're raised in because where I was, where I grew up, we had our door locked because the environment wasn't like that. Like exactly. it was whatever you yeah. can get, get it when you can. This door is unlocked. I'm about to run out here and get this stuff. But if I took a 10, 15 minute walk across the canal and went to my friend David's house in that neighborhood, it was a little bit more trustworthy of a neighborhood. They literally did leave their door. That, that was one of the houses. Like I could just go to his house and walk and in just the front walk door. in. Yeah. yeah. What color was David? <laughs> <laughs> David was white. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying it, it does have to do with the neighborhood, though, too, because that like growing up, we viewed that neighborhood as a separate neighborhood from where we were. Because you go to one side of the canal, it's supposed to look like a little, quote unquote, better. And then on the other side of, can, of the canal is a little a little more rough. Like you had your apartments and your townhouses and stuff over there. Yeah. And then on this side, it was everybody that had houses, they had pools. Um, <laughs> this is going to sound kind of messed up, but you got both parents. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. But it was just it was just a little different on the other side of the canal. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like eight miles. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You cross this line, you cross the railroad tracks. Yeah. It's a little different over there. What is something you wish other people would know about your guys' race? Or you uh, feel that is overlooked? My race? Not a lot of people know my race. It's like whenever I like especially here in Arizona, wherever I I had to explain to them like where exactly Guam is every single time. And it's People tiny. don't even know exactly where it's no. at. Even when I say my race, like Chamorro, I'm Chamorro. I'm like, oh, what the heck is that? Only if like maybe in California, yeah. Because there's yeah. a lot of Chamorros in California and San Diego and uh, in L.A. Yeah. yeah. And that's the only time I know is if you're from California is if I say my race and you know what it is. It's like, oh, you're probably from California. It's like, yeah, I am from California. <laughs> um, but it's here I have to explain to them like where it's at. Like, oh, it's east of like Australia, east of the Philippines. East of Japan, and it's just a little dot in the middle of the Pacific Still Ocean. Still part of the U.S. Still part of the U.S. Yes, yeah, so just so, like Puerto Rico. Just like Puerto Rico. Still part of the U.S. Because everybody, I don't know why they always count that, and uh, I think it's Puerto Rico. They're always it's like Puerto Rico. Oh, that's not part of the U.S. I'm it's like, huh? so it's the U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, American Samoa, but those are nationalists. They're not actually American citizens, so they can move here, yeah. uh, but they don't have full citizenship, and you can't not vote for president. Yeah. And then, yeah, that kind of sense. And like even Guam, you can't vote for governor or uh, sorry, president. You only can vote for governors there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's it's different. But when I move here, I'm still yeah, I'm still a U.S. citizen, but I don't have, or I do have all the rights now here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you fear society's um disapproval within any race or you know disapproval? Yeah. Um. Just depends on where you're at. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Not necessarily disapproval, but there are definitely uh, times where I'm in like certain settings and I feel like that judgment, like, oh, that's the white girl. She's probably racist or something like I, you know, like sometimes I feel like people see that I'm white and they yeah. assume that I'm racist. racist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, let's also remember. And then like you overprove like, no, I'm not. But. Yeah. You know, but that was something that I dealt with much at a much younger age. Now, I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> if that's how you want to think of me, then that's fine. But yeah, the older you get, the less you care. The less you care. Yeah, yeah because it's like, this is me. This is who I am. You're always going to get the same person. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, depending on the setting, like, you know, if I'm around more, maybe, uh, well, more educated people, right. I might talk a certain different, t you know, like. <laughs> You know, or, yeah, you know, like I, I'm probably going to complete sentences and, yeah. you know, pronounce my words properly. And that goes but, good with uh, the next question. But before I um, say that, I do want to mention and when you assume, like my Nana Josie always says, you're going to make an ass out of you and me. Mm -hmm. So if you put that together, it spells assume. Um, <laughs> but the follow up question with that is, do you feel you have to act a certain way when you are with um, when you're with your partner's family? Do you have to mm -hmm. act like, you know. Or just, or even no. at work, or whatever the case is, yet that you know. I think that, like for me, the base of my personality is always the same. Yeah, I just might clean it up a little bit, uh -huh. depending on who I'm around. You okay. know, so if, like I said, if I'm with people that are really more hoity-toity, like when I'm doing catering and I'm in these people's homes that are worth eighteen million dollars. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna act a different way than 
just the chill me who I am. Yeah. I probably wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, that's chill to, you know, somebody that's writing my check at the end yeah. of the day. I'm going to say, but. yeah, it's like here when I'm with like you guys or like my family here, I'm like American me, if that yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. But like when I went like back to Guam, I, I felt like a, like the old me, you know, yeah. in a sense. And like my... I guess like accent in a way, like like words I would use there, yeah. you wouldn't use here, and it's just it, it's it's like uh like when you move to Hawaii and you live there for like five months, you sound, suddenly sound like a Hawaiian, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, brother, you know? like, like that kind of sense. <laughs> and it's like when I went back there, it kind of just you know I started this. I don't know how to explain it because I can't talk to uh, you know if like I was talking to my uncle, it's just it's different. Just so yeah, I, it's a routine. It's a routine, yeah. yeah. So you kind of get um, to the sense. Like, I'm pretty sure she goes back to New York. She's gonna be like yelling all the time, you know. So it's <laughs> yeah. like, it's, well, if I get drunk or mad, yeah, my accent comes out more. Okay, you know. But yeah. I think it comes out too when you're around <laughs> other New Yorkers. Yeah, not necessarily your sure. accent, but the ener- the energy, the energy. Yeah. Really yeah. accent, but and that it, high energy it, New Yorker. Yeah want to get loud well and i still have that you know like if i'm really excited about a conversation right you know a topic that it does just come out because uh the passion is there yeah you know but um i can actually feel my jaw change when i start (laughs) using my old accent and it's not that i'm trying to it's a conscious thing but like i pronounce my r's now which i never used to do (laughs) (laughs) um so then like if like now i say new york yeah. But if I were to say New York, I, like I feel my whole mouth changes, Shit, like man. my jaw moves differently. So and I'm like, oh, I just said that out. with an accent because yeah. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is a message that you guys both have um, for, you know, the racist old bigots um, that are judging you based on, you know, your race and who you're dating? Uh, I don't have a message in a sense. Or what would you want them to know? What would you want them to to say? You know, just something that you want. Like you had your own. You're losing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, really, they are. I hope they don't <laughs> they spread it to like their offspring. Well, like, yeah, they, it's probably they, too, yeah. Yeah, I think they might be, but it's like I said earlier. I mean, I have a lot of hope for our future because mm-hmm. the fact that everybody's, you know, we're all just mingling. You know. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, the a message going to somebody with deaf ears is not. It's not going to be heard anyway. You know, my thing is more of like when I've been in a situation like at work and I might hear, you know, the 70 year old guy make a racist comment. He didn't say it to me. I didn't necessarily wasn't supposed to hear it, but I'll try to make it a point to like talk really good about, you know, somebody that's not white. Like, wow, they're so talented. Isn't that amazing? Can't you believe that this song is, blah, 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 you know, whatever it is. Yeah. And show them, like, you bridge the gap. Right. Like, we're all freaking human. Yeah. That's at the end of the day, we're all human. And nobody's better than the next person just because of your skin color. That's right. so, so ridiculous, you know. So that's that's more so like what I try and do is bridge those gaps and and create friendships between people that probably would have never had them like right. w- when i was bartending it was really fun for me to get people to start talking and mingling and then all of a sudden they're coming out hanging out together yeah. <laughs> i mean they, when they would have never been friends because they're so close-minded all they gotta do is just open their mind and just yep. we got we all gotta realize that we're all you know different which is cool but at mm-hmm. the same time we connect in some way shape or form just, yeah we all bleed red right yeah so Power is love. Mm-hmm. Um, so on this next part of the show, it's not going to be about power of love. Um, this next uh, part of the show, we're going to talk about what really pisses you off. I'll be switching this uh, from the old uh, is it weird segment that I used to do. I would ask, you know, is it weird? And then see if you guys had relating um, experiences. So no more of that. Um, but we are going to see what really pisses us off. Today, we're going to mention one thing that really pisses me off. Um, as a way to vent, um, or, you know, for you guys as well, it's going to be a way to vent and express how we struggle with daily frustration so we don't carry it on past this point. And I'll go first. People who cancel out at the last minute. (laughs) (laughs) People, please know we are out here spending time to create or do whatever service we are providing and canceling out 
um, on the the shows, it, it makes it really hard. Like it's 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 showing the lack of you know respect, the lack of uh, integrity. Um, you know, we're spending a lot of time on it. I just want to push out a solid show and make y'all um, really want to be a part of something special. Um, you know, if it's you know the mom and pop spot, give me a shot. You know, let's let's talk. You know, conversate. You know, as as a parent, you know, forum a community and come together. If it's the socially awkward, let's get really socially awkward and have these uh, really you know conversations that we can come together if you're looking for a place to podcast give habari live um entertainment a chance you know come out here and record you know he's uh you know opening up the doors for you to be able to you know broadcast your your voice your experience and everything else um you know even as far as the other shows the wealth for generations he's trying to um bring up you know to try to better you um to be able to expand on the businesses and everything else you know we got the von rebel show who's talking about hip hop, you know, she'll put you on game to what's currently happening. And we also have Habari live. The the show itself is bringing you update to, uh, with the live news and everything else. Jump on there. You know, there's plenty of games that Aisha does, which is really fun. I try to get on there. Not always do I know everything, um, but I mean, it's always fun because you learn something new from that show every time. But um, what pisses you guys off? Laziness. Yeah. In the relationships? <laughs> Just anything in general. Like last last um, show, I talked about uh, uh, lifted truck drivers, uh, how they control the road and everything else. They're very aggressive. Road rage. Um, I think they call them little man syndrome. Um, that was my gripe last last time. This show, I'm just talking about just people that are just not taking, you know, um, you know, the patience and the respect to say, you know, what, like I'm going to cancel out and they'll do it like, you know, right before the show or they just they don't take the importance or the value of what we're trying to build and say, you know, like uh, if they knew whatever the case was, you know, just try to take more emphasis and more um, pride in, you know, of what we're trying to build here. I got you, Patrick. Yeah. I thought we were supposed to do this like three Sundays ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I guess it's on the 20, what, third now or 24th. Yeah. Um, I guess one thing that would really make me mad is uh, not mad, I guess. No, what cringe. You uh, this is like cringiness. Um, so like, nothing really makes me like too mad to the point because i'm very calm i'm a calm individual I, yeah but i guess the only thing that comes to my mind when it comes to like anything that's close to like, angriness is cringiness yeah it's like watching like disgusting like kissing scenes or you know just anything that's just embarrassment there you go embarrassment that's yeah. what makes me in a sense angriness i'm not too i'm not an angry individual i'm very calm yeah in a sense. i mean i try not to be too but it's life life it's happens life. we're all human life. um I, I I bottle up my emotions. That's not good. I bottle it up. So like you gotta release that. Yeah, yeah. So I I do bottle it up, and then every once in a while, the, that just explodes in a sense. So reach I, out. I mean, I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying to do this uh, wellness and recovery journey. So I've done you know the cryo chambers, the red light therapies, the um the uh, what is it, the blue light saunas. I've tried you know a few different things, mm -hmm. and I'm still trying to do other stuff. I would I want to do the um. What is it? The one with the needles, the um, acupuncture. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to do some of the yogas. I'm trying to do some of the uh, the brain scanning. So I want to be able to go around and figure out a good, you know, basis of uh, wellness and recoveries. So that way I can be able to offer that um, that tip for others. So that way people that are going through you know, acupuncture their own... is the one that pokes you, right? You yeah, know, yeah, they poke really you all around good. the body. Yeah, you've done it before. Mm -hmm. Does it like make you bleed? I don't think so. Um, no, right. So if you if you have stagnation in that. Spot, like, yeah, you will bleed blood. okay um but not like you're not going to be like bleeding <laughs> out you're gonna, you know there'll be like a little bit of blood but if there's not a lot of stagnation that needs to release then not much is going to come with the blood needle blood. but it's so thin it's like so thin That's you really don't even blood. feel it it's like yeah. a needle in the thread kind of small it's smaller oh, okay it's not gonna... yeah, yeah it's smaller than a needle in or the thread. what's that thing where they like foliate like like exfoliate, exfoliate? yeah exfoliate yeah. Like that kind of small needle it's yeah. super tiny it's like super super thin like a hair okay. yeah. yeah um in in the next part of the show i want to give a shout out and or spotlight a local business an artist or an organization so today on the um the list we have uh tamiko bell and she has um sorry i'm just now pulling it up um, you can find her on Google, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and coming soon, her YouTube. But she has Fairy Craft Mother. Um, you guys just interviewed her. How was that? Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, 
pursuing this connection. She's amazing. We talked for like an hour, hour uh -huh. and a half outside yeah. <laughs> after the show. Um, I mean, that's not hard to do when you meet another New Yorker, but yeah. But no, her her brand is amazing. What and, is it? Uh, she does therapy essentially through art. Uh, and it's not just therapy. It's also um, just to have fun. But, you know, bringing creativity, uh, it it is therapeutic, whether you think it is or not, you know. And it could come in many different forms. But um, she has a whole lot of other things in the works. So yeah. I'm really excited to see where that goes. Anything that you're thinking of uh, in particular? As far as what? with um, Any projects that you're... Oh, do with her? Um, not necessarily yet. We didn't really sit and talk about any projects we were going to do together. Yeah. But um, definitely going to. Like she's on the radar. I so. like the painting where it's like black and then like you you paint like your, your lower half of the body like in a nude sense and then you put it against like the, the painting. Yeah. You ever seen those before? No. Mm -mm. No. You have a picture of that, Allie? <laughs> it's like a nude sense. It's more yeah. more of a yeah an attraction. I'll add it to the video, and then no, I don't think you want to add it. To... <laughs> or I won't. I won't add it to the video. Um, but I mean, you guys can Google it to see what that that looks like. Um, next on the show, we have um, Segredad Latina LLC, which is a proud member of the Local First Arizona. They are quality security cameras at affordable prices for homes and businesses with more than thirteen years of experience. Um, you can find them at, and I'm actually going to spell it because I'm pretty sure I butchered their name. It's a S E G U R I D A D Latina LLC, um, dot com. Once again, that's S E G U R I D A D Latina LLC dot com. And they're located off of 59th Avenue in Indian school. So, yeah, I, I said it wrong. I don't know. I got that. Is like, that like the saguaro cactus, but then saguaro dad? No, it's, uh, second. Segredad? Segredad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I probably said it wrong. Mm -hmm. But as we wrap up the show, I want to give a huge shout out to today's guest. Bo, where can they find you at? I don't have social media. Um, oh, nothing. good for you. Yeah, yeah, that's no, really <laughs> I don't really use it. Um, I, I really don't. Maybe the message, like my friends and all that, but I don't I don't use social media as much. I don't have a Facebook. I, I have an Instagram, but I don't even use it. Just uh, if you see me, say hi. Yeah. What, what happened with your grinder account? Is that no more? Uh, not anymore. I'm on a uh, Tinder now. Okay. Uh, if you want to look, I saw uh, OnlyFans <laughs> one the other day. The OnlyFans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you want to look for him on Tinder, um, delicious. I would not hit him up because his his fiance will um, kick your butt. Mm -hmm. um, and all of her siblings. Yeah. So um, if you do see him, say hi. Just wave to him. Hi. Uh, my guest Jessica. Where can they follow you at? Um, Jessica. Hold on, let me do the platform. Wait. There we go. I don't even know mine, yeah. to be honest with you. I'm on Facebook as Jessica Marrero. Um, I think Instagram is Jess Marrero, but instead of O with a zero at the end. Yeah. And then, <coughs> um, <coughs> yeah, I just started my business. I got my LLC and my EIN last week. Thank yeah. you. Um, and that's for Moss Boss Organic Gel. Yeah. And that's on, I'm only on Instagram with that so far and that I just started. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot more content on there. I'm going to be doing and, like recipes and stuff. For and then are you going to be at the next First Friday? Cause I am. So if you guys are looking for her product, she'll also be at the First Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So check that out. Too. Oh, I have a PlayStation account. Cup Noodle 671. Want to play me? Say that one more time. <laughs> yeah. I have a PlayStation account if you guys want to play with me. Cup okay. Noodle 671. <laughs> Cup noodle. Cup noodles. Yeah, just like the regular oh, like food brand noodles. Yeah, it's like yeah. my seventh grade okay. <laughs> gamer tag. Yeah. Cup noodles. Cup noodles. Six seven one. Yeah. Six seven one. So if you want to go in there and play, um, I got you. It... I play all the games. Okay, cool. All so he'll play you. Um, and delicious dishes too. Mm hmm You can yeah, plug that. Delicious dishes six oh two. Yeah. And um, Desert Land Kids. Yeah. yeah. You guys should do like a huge like gaming thing where you play against other people and then you cater the delicious dishes. That'd be dope. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so check them both out i want to thank you both for taking the time out of your busy day uh to be on this awkward show um i appreciate um everything that you guys were able to you know be comfortable and, and express um for everybody out there if you, there's a topic that you want to talk about um, like i mentioned earlier just give me a shot like let's let's bring it to you know fruition let's let's you know make it a, an awareness you know understanding and let's, let's have some fun with it um it's just going to take the matter of just you just reaching out 
Um, so to the voice with the choice, Mr. Dip and Elijah Wealth for Generations Lee, let me give them an applause as well. Why, thank you, comrade. What do the other buttons do? Is there any other sound effects on there too? Yeah, there's a ton of them. Yeah. Uh, 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 I just forgot where I was at. <laughs> oh, please like and follow Habari Live podcast, Habari Entertainment, and check out other shows on there like Habari Live, The Von Rebel Show, Wealth for Generations, and the Mom and Pop Spot podcast. Please also check out One Love on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. This is One Love. Thank you for tuning into the show. Make it a great day. Stay hydrated and well rested. And we're out. Bye. Bye. Peace. Bye.